Hi, I'm Mary Hoffman, and the topic of this demonstration is Shop Floor Mobile for Visual. Shop Floor Mobile can be used with any device that has access to a browser. Who uses Shop Floor Mobile? Well, planners and schedulers, expediters, as well as shop leads and foremen, operators, material handlers, even those folks that might be receiving purchased goods at the back dock. We're going to approach this demonstration from multiple different angles. Um, let's start with someone who is an operator, someone whose job it is to make product, and we're asking them to log in and out of jobs for costing purposes, as well as that time keeping, um, and for them to be able to get access to information about the job that they're supposed to work on. So to level set, let's go over to visual and look at a work order first, so that we just know what we're seeing. We'll go to that manufacturing window and look at a particular work order. This work order is in progress. I can see from those completion meters that I've issued some materials, I've completed some steps, and I'm partially complete in some areas, including on those subs. If you're using version 9 um, or one of the latest versions of Visual, then you can turn on a preference where you can also not only see what's already been completed, but I can see that there are, there are certain operations that are in progress. And um, right now, looking at this work order, I can see that on sub one at the shear, someone is currently logged in. Sub two at the cutoff saw, someone is currently logged in because I can set that outline to be a different color. Mine's set to red. Another way to see that information is to look at labor tickets and ask to just see what's in process. So right now I have Dave and Ron logged into this, to this job. When I'm working on a job, I might use Shop Floor Mobile in conjunction with the Traveler. Here's an example of a Traveler. I can use it in conjunction with scanning if I choose to, or I can use it in a paperless fashion. So we're going to explore both of those options. So let's assume that I am a, an operator. My name is Allie, and we're going, going to log in to um, Shop Floor Mobile as Allie, and then we'll, um, we'll see what Allie can do with uh, using a traveler, and then we'll look at what Allie can do even without uh, paper. So let's do that. Let's go over to Shop Floor Mobile. Here we are. Let's go to Labor. Here, Allie can clock in for the day. She's not clocked in yet, so let's clock her in. Now she's clocked in. So very simple. Allie's now clocked in. Now let's look at some of those buttons. And oh, I probably should point out that if Allie doesn't want to see buttons and would rather see a list like this, that's fine too. I'm going to work with buttons for now. There are many preferences that a user can set um, for how they want to interact with the system. And I also should point out that from a security standpoint that um, Ali is only going to have access to those areas where we, uh, where we give her, grant her access. Ali might not be someone who, for example, would ever do purchase receipts or would ever issue materials in and out of work orders or move from location to location. So if that was the case, she wouldn't even see those as options. We'll go back to this labor for a moment, and, in a, and we will also come and look at uh, this from a, from a different angle, from the scheduling. So let's start with labor. Notice some of the options here. Um, Allie could, for example, look back at where labor her labor has been charged, look up a job, look at all the labor that was charged to, a, to an order. Look at other employees that might be checked in. That might be something that uh, that you leave to foreman, uh, and, and maybe Allie wouldn't see that particular one. If you want folks logging in and out of indirect activities like meetings or cleanup or 
uh, whatever that might be, you can, you can allow them that same app access. But let's assume that I'm using, <clears throat> using this in, um, I can use it with barcoding in scan mode, or I can just type information in. But let's assume that I'm back on that work order, that same work order, and I scan that work order and it fills in this information for me. And I scan onto a particular step, happens to be drill. So now Allie is logged into that particular step and she can go to work. Now another thing that Allie could have done is come into the scheduling area and now what she's seeing is those areas where she uh, is skilled to work or those work centers or resources that Allie might log into, um, drill, grind, mill. When she says which area she's working in, in this case, drill. Then what she gets is a list in priority sequence of the jobs that she is to work on or that, that that's in front of that resource in priority order. So the instruction is pick the first job. <clears throat> if uh, Allie could log into this job, we've already logged her in, but she could log in right from here and just say, I'm ready to start this job. And then... Um, Click there and she'll be on the job. We already logged her in. While on jobs, like this one, um, an operator can see instruction, can see documents, can see pictures, also can add documents if you, if you choose to allow them to do that. So they can be looking at, in this case, drawings. But it could be anything that is attached to that work order, either to the work or the entire work order or to this very step. So um, with Shopfloor Mobile, you truly can be paperless if, if that makes sense in your environment. So we've logged Allie into this um, particular job. Let's go back and look at visual and look at that job. And we should see that we now have not just the two operators that were logged in previously, but we should also see Allie logged into the drill. We don't need that traveler. Let's just go look at the work order. Sure enough, now there is a red outline around that drill. And once again, looking at just those in-process tickets, we can now see that we have Allie logged in along with Dave and Ron. When Allie's finished with the job, she'll simply say, I'm done with that job, stop job, and give any quantity complete, any deviations, any comments that she chooses to and, um, and that will create the labor ticket entry, complete that labor ticket entry, and charge the, charge the job for her time, the, t the elapsed time that she spent. Let's look at a couple of other things that Allie might be able to do. We'll go back to that scheduling area. If your environment is such that it allows operators to log into multiple jobs at one time. That's very simply done here in the scheduling area. I, as an operator, you can click on multiple jobs and clock into all of them at one time. Other things that are here that might be important for an operator to see, let's just say that there are additional details that are needed. So here's some more information about this particular job. I could go see the materials that were on this job, the rest of the routing, including status. Now we're going to talk about status in a subsequent video. This is one demo of four regarding Shopfloor Mobile. So we'll talk about these indicators in a moment, but, um, but an operator can go and get additional information about a job Again, allowing them to have that wireless, or I'm sorry, that, that paperless, <laughs> paperless interface um, and, and be able to get information, have it right at their fingertips on a, on a tablet, um, smartphone, 
on a PC if that's uh, how you operate. So we will talk more about other options in those subsequent videos. The things that will be on those videos is a drill into maybe a look or uh, from a foreman's perspective, where I might want, we'll drill into a little more information about jobs in the scheduling area. And then in video three and then four, we'll be talking about what I can do with material and what I can do with purchasing. So, so move on to video number two.